Yeah. Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is the state license requirements working group and Cass is going to take the role. Andy Bayowski. Here. Present. Here. Kay O'Neill. Here. Cal. She was in the Potter. Rita Bassad. Nelson. Here. Jude Tillman. Julia Herrera. Yes. Here. Here. Alberry, Susan Tibbin, Ty Sellers, here. Carmen Zolo, here. Janelle, here. Uh, Mary Lynn Hunt, present. here. Here. Anyone else that I missed? Uh, <laughs> I see it. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, everyone. Um, I just want to comment that we have had two working groups uh, meet earlier today, building requirements and track and trace. Um, with building requirements, uh, so, uh, in this room, and I don't know about on the call, uh, attended the standing committee yesterday. And so what we did, hey, hello, come on in. <laughs> So what we did with building requirements uh, this morning is actually assigned Mike Oliphant and Scott Ward to work together and identify the, the issues that we already identified as a working group, identify those issues that we were in agreement with and those issues that we weren't in agreement with, and those two are going away and working on all of those issues, of course, with feedback from the um, people in the working group, and then coming back at our next meeting, which is October 5th at 1 o'clock, to talk about those issues. And our goal is, as a working group, we will come up with um, and, and uh, options to send to the standing committee that will be meeting on October 16th. Now, the standing committee is John McCallan and Dan Hamburg. They're appointed by the full board, and the purpose of that standing committee is to discuss Class K. But we know that they will be going a little further and talking about not only Class K. So uh, we will be sending them uh, our recommendations from our working group. So I think that building requirements working group is really making a lot of progress, and I hope those of you that were there, Paul, um, Patrick, also feel the same way. The second group that met today was Track and Trace, and we had a demo from SICA, and SICA had three people, and they're very good about sending their, their people out here to work with us and to work with um, cultivators. And so during Track and Trace, we dealt with the key issues that we've been dealing with on Track and Trace, and decided that we would meet again later in the month, well, actually in October, rather than meeting next week on the 5th, and that will give staff and SICA more time to go through the track and trace issues. So I think, again, over the last couple weeks with these committees, what we've been able to do is identify key issues and then determine how we want to move forward working with them. And it's very clear to us as staff that for you, the industry, that time is of the essence and you want us to keep going as quickly as we can, which is what we're trying to do, but some things just take more time. So those are those two groups, and as I said, I think we made um, some significant progress. So now with the um, uh, state license requirements group on the agenda in front of you, um, first item after the roll call is state update, and so I'd like to open that up if anyone has an update that they'd like to give us. And Sarah, Jean, I'd like to start with you. Talk about not telling you I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, just on the county's end, 
and myself and kind of counsel were going through AD 133. Uh -huh. um, and we're getting ready to have a couple of moves with our association to have advocacy efforts on the state. And um, I don't really think I have any new updates. We're still telling us early November for regulation. So it doesn't seem like they're going to come any quicker than that. Okay. And what we are aware of is that for our legislators, uh, that they, you know, have come back it has states that they really work with the state to make sure that the state works with our associations and with the local. We do have some red lines in the ordinance that are going to go before the board on October 3rd. So there will be some changes to some of what we're calling the license types to match these new license types. So you'll see some differences in what we're calling certain things now from the original draft that you might have saw at the planning commission. So we are updating those types of definitions and license types for the first reading on October 3rd. The red line will be available. It's online right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, there's a lot of documents. Um, yes, there are a lot of documents. Total. And actually, it's at the planning commission. Yeah, so if you plan building um, on their public notice page, it's probably the easiest, quickest way to download it. There's a red line for the cannabis facilities business license, a red line for the facility zoning code, staff report, the uh, information that came out of the planning commission, and I think. I think that's all set. So join us on the third. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Because we're not the only people that talk to the state reps. So Paul, do you want to give us an update? Yes. Uh, Susan and I went up to the Sacramento for the public comment in the CEQA meeting last week. We spent the afternoon um, speaking with um, Woods, who's the head of the branches in the Department of Public Health, including testing as well as So we spoke with him, and we were very well pleased. We spoke about an hour and a half in his office, and uh, he was very interested in what Minnesota County was doing um, and, and, and what we had to say about certain things. Felt that he was um, pretty much in the cocoon. He very much appreciated us coming to visit. Um, we went to the event for the CEQA meeting and had an opportunity to sit down for about 45 minutes with our VA talking about her you know, proposals and our ideas and what's going on, trying to get a feel for what's going on with the micro business. She said that they were going to, um, and how it was going to be tiered. And she gave us a funny look. And then, you know, well, they're going to be able to check off different boxes for the things that you want to do. If you don't want to do retail, then I think that there's so many agencies that have their fingers in a market. So I suggested that, we suggested that they look at the micro business not only being tiered um, from requirements or what you want to do, but also according to cultivation type and not just limit it to, to only the 10,000 square feet. Um, and for medical and for abuse. Very interested in that. We so don't know if we can do that according to uh, the statute. So we need some statute and some preferences, and then we can talk. Well, coincidentally, uh, the very next day, we were supposed to go to an event in Oakland, which Steve Woods and Laurie Ajax were going to be attending. Um, so I stayed up all night and, and put together the um, different criteria, statute from Alma, from the CEQA document, and from uh, as being in court, and um, went in and spoke, and saw I said, well, did you find the statute? I said, well, yes, yeah, so this document, and what well, I'm proposing, and what I was going to propose to uh, the county as well, is to how to put together a cottage industry uh, micro business and um, and the fees reduced and that's that's what this is and we spent the afternoon uh, because of the evening event going to the bell office to the speaker's office to the board's office and a few different other assemblymen delivering the document as well. Uh Nar uh I'm sorry, could not tell from the governor's office was very interested at the event and she invited us, uh, she was going to put the staff together and they wanted us to come and give them some feedback and discuss the 
So that's pretty exciting. Um, Can I ask you a question about it? Sure. What, what about um, Amber Morris? Because she's in charge of the cultivation end. Has she been looped into that? She's from Ag, and yeah. uh, no, I haven't had a chance to speak. She wasn't around, and we didn't have a chance to get over to Ag. We were pretty, we, were pretty, we spent most of our time in the capital, and then, you know, and stuff like that. But uh, uh, I will definitely get in touch with her. If I believe that she's going to be part of the, of the staff, we can get it out. But legislative season seven, what um, legislative aides and the chief of staff and the experienced folks who share the bus is that they are way, way behind the edge of the ball. Um, they haven't really codified much of what we expect they would have put in the yeah. mm -hmm. um, But the good news was that they were extremely interested in what our city has drafted, even initially, even as a, a first or second draft in an effort that will help them to codify what they need to codify. So it, it's actually to our advantage um, to, you know, be in some flexibility um, because they are um, of a mind to take a look at what we've done in effort to get up to speed on your end. Yeah. Um, they have uh, issued temporary, uh, a Thursday night, temporary license. <laughs> Because I, I have it here, think still wet. Because realize that they will not meet the deadline. As a way for people to be included, at least in a temporary situation. One of the touched on in this document, and Steve Wood was very receptive to, you know, to reduce security measures at, 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 for a microbiome at a coach level. Because the security measures that are for statewide are pretty good. Right. Oh. Owners. I mean, it's impossible to do walking around with a photo ID around your own house. It's just silly. So, um, so, so those sorts of things and, and making those kinds of concessions have actually allowed for this special regulation. Good. Good. Okay. Good update. I uh, have any questions for either Paul or Susan? Anna? Um, when you're talking cottage at the state level, it's different than our cottage definition, correct? Well, that's, yes, it, but it, it, it's interesting, and that's the next item on, on the issue is category is the biggest one as far as I can see. And because I wasn't able to, you were able to talk to that, um, we couldn't give clarification. That, but we did bring it up with the, uh, the legislators and with the people that we did speak to. Um, when I was looking at the state regs, they called for <coughs> every category of cultivation. They called for canopy, except for outdoor cottage. They called for 25 plants, and it didn't make sense to me. Now, so I've been pushing, we've been pushing every time we go to Sacramento, you know, can we get this changed to, to canopy as well? Because we have pictures of giant, enormous plants and ACDC plants, which we decide to So 25 of those or 25 of these. So that's why we're pushing for canopy. It never occurred to me to read the definition of canopy. Canopy is canopy is canopy. I R squared. It's the grip one of a plant. But not even the state. No, and this has been uh, a difference for quite a long time, and I don't know if you kind of fit in with CGA or Hezekiah Allen, who's done a lot of that in person negotiating and um, with the legislatures about the movement on that. But I don't know if there's going to be time in this go down to change it within the regs. I don't know. I mean, they didn't seem optimistic. Well, um, um, I was told that they're, they're, and why they wanted to get us up there quickly about this uh, is because the emergency regs are coming out next month or in November, and, and, and there's time to, to possibly get that dialed in. So we're told from the same page that Canopy is Canopy, and Canopy is not close to so, so they're defining that. And that brings us to part of what we need to talk about today along with the, uh, the update, so thank you. Uh, the top three issues that were identified by this group, canopy, security, and transportation. So speaking. I remember that it was provisional license, and the group has been come up with the rest of them. 
Well, we have provisional license too. It just um, that but is an issue. Yeah. Three, but, but before we talk about number we, one. before we talk about provisional, okay. Before we go there, though, what I wanted to say is that um, when it comes out with regs. It's good if we had a joint response. I think it would be more uh, of an impact with the state if it wasn't only local government and it wasn't the industry, but if we actually came in with an agreed upon statement and uh, responses to their draft. So I think that's something to consider as we move forward, that that could be a really, not only a product out of this group, but it could also speak to some of the things for and maybe potentially capping it to the top three or four items to ensure that we make the quick turnaround, which is going to be very short. So having the four items that we can quickly do a comment in is going to be more beneficial than trying to. And I have, I have in my notes, too, that number one was local permit um, and state requirements for provisional licenses. So this was just a, a typo here. So and the three are under that. So with that, with those with um, three issues that have been identified as the top, or say four, provisional licenses, canopy, security, and transportation, and given what you know about the progress of the other two working groups, how would you like to proceed with this working group? And I'm going to turn to Hannah, who had a great suggestion at the last meeting. Sure. Well, I think that since we had the benefit of um, having two submissions, uh, one on provisional permits and one on uh, delivery, although I guess that's a little bit of a topic, but at least just starting with the uh, provisional permit submission for discussion, I think that it would be um, helpful if we could just go through that and and discuss our uh, support or concerns about it. Um, and just to dovetail on what um, Seth said about the time frame and the rapid response, I think that uh, you may recall that that was one of my top issues that I submitted in the last time in terms of having a rapid response team. And since we know that it's going to be sometime in November, but we don't know when, I think that even if the entire group can't commit to time frame if we have a sub task force that is willing to go, all right, no matter what's going on in our lives, we're willing to jump in and commit to that type of I think that would be helpful. And that would be, and I appreciate that because, you know, we know track and trace that there are key people in that group and today it was really Ron and Ashley really being the two that were um, really outspoken and very much focused and committed to making track and trace work at some level. And of course, with building requirements, we already know we had Scott and, and Mike. So in this group, I don't know who would want to take the lead outside of our meeting to actually put something together that we could use as a working document to move forward. So I don't know if there's a couple of people in here that would be willing to do that. I would be willing to help, uh, and, but I don't know if I could take Exclusive to take the but I definitely am willing to help and spend time on um, the rapid response. Okay, so we have. Oh, you raise your hand, but I. <laughs> do, you want, do you want me to put you on the list? I can. I know the women like jumped right in and no, you know, do this. No, you know, our so. concern is, is that we wouldn't be able to come through for the group because. We're going to Sacramento now every week, but okay. we're at their disposal okay. whenever they call. Um, and that's a good place to see this. Yeah, Martin has requested um, knowledge base, something that you may be able to experience the most legislators to have at all. I would request is there any way that you could um, commit to a little? Phone update on what I was just about to or mention is that we could be in the city as that would be a dump. We see how can you work with you? And update. And then you update through through the point people and then we can bring that back to the group. And that of course dovetails with what the county does with liaison with the Department of Public Safety. Yeah. 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 And that of course dovetails with what the county does liaison with the associations and whatnot. And if we have the information coming forward, it may help narrow the 
scope of what we really have to respond to and not duplicate things that are already being handled over. Okay, so before we actually get into the provisional permit discussion, then what we've identified, we already have identified the key issues, we have those, and that Hannah, Jude, and Julia will work outside of this group, basically synthesize what we're doing today and put something together for our next meeting, and that Susan and Paul, who are frequenting Sacramento these days, and um, and moving, moving up, I'd have to say, that uh, you will be our liaison and we'll come back and share information and we will share information with you. So we should be able to pull this together into a nice package if we actually get the draft reg and we're ready to make a response. So if there's nothing more on that, everybody okay with that, then we'll head and move to the provisional permit. And, uh, Oh, uh, let me say one more thing. As far as the county contact, because you see a lot of county people in the in this working group, Sarah will be our contact. So as as you move forward in putting something together, if you could communicate with Sarah, if you have questions, if you need something, if you just want to put something together and then actually have us format it, we're glad to do that. Okay? Oh, geez. We that we sent it out. Yeah. We've got we actually got major complaints about doing that. <laughs> so, um, so I don't know if everybody in here agrees. Uh, we, we could actually do an email yeah. list for yeah. this. Yeah. Um, verbal this, agreement. Okay. <laughs> you guys are all all right. Nobody's going to turn around and sue us for that. Okay. Okay, all right. Okay, we did that. So, um, Brass County Provisional Permit. So, does someone want to start on this? Did everybody, did everybody get the hands out at the door? Did you get them? I think Ellen did. Ellen did. Ellen uh, no, no, I have something to direct tell on that. Is one thing that I've seen over and over is this other authorization, but no definition of what it could be, what it is. So I know when the regs coming out, I'm looking to see exactly what they state. You can wondering if they could have flex. I'm hoping there's flexibility that it. So there's a lady side saying we're going to provisionally give you a license, but if they accept something else. So, yeah, it's just while we're on, the board had a discussion on this. I'm sure some of you were there. That was, uh, do we say nothing? Do we answer in the affirmative? Do we answer in the negative? And the recommendation from the county council, I think, was along the lines of say nothing. Yet, I, I still recall it came back to board discussion that we were more inclined find a way to answer in the affirmative unless there was a reason to say no. Right. So it could be as simple as you have submitted a completed application, you right. have paid your fees, and we have not yet thrown you out, mm -hmm. you are considered to be in good standing yeah. or whatever. The yeah. And their authorization. So, yeah. And that answers this yeah. very right. right. And so that, that the issue that you see is that what's the county doing so that uh, we could meet the state requirements for the industry. So, um, Steve Woods, uh, who is the post department head of Sacramento, shared with us that uh, while he understood that a non response was presuming everything was fine, he sort of what would happen is it would delay the applicant for um, at least 60 mm -hmm. days, and he felt that that, that might was a shift for, for some people. Okay, so go ahead first, then here, and then I want to get back to what Supervisor McCowan said and, and work us through this because I think that actually speaks. Uh, we all think about the non cultivation people that need to be yeah. licenses, which they have absolutely no time for. So that would be that the and then we could actually get those conditional licenses. So I think we can move back to take the first time. No, thank you. 
Anna. Sure. So I, I concur wholeheartedly, and I want to say that, again, my prior written submission suggested that the county take a proactive approach with the um, legislature and uh, the agencies that are writing the emergency regs to actually advocate that our and this only is uh, right now for the Ag Department, but of course, if there's something similar for the other business licenses um, that embossed, which that people get, to sit and say, would this qualify as an other authorization? And to be proactive rather than reactive and say, we have this system in place, um, and again, we can impose a, um, a an additional um, qualifier that, of course, if they have somehow been deemed to violate anything, then no. Um, but that's one thing. The other thing is I really would like us to distinguish between what is required at the state level for the state provisional licenses versus what is required at the state level for um, regular ongoing licenses. And the, the three forks in the road about say something affirmative, say nothing, or say something bad is really at the non provisional mm -hmm. step. So um, I think we have to address if there's a difference in how we're going to handle it at each one, we should address that. Hopefully, we can handle it the same way. Okay, Paul, and then I want to get back to this side of the table. Yeah, sorry, you didn't ask about that directly. She said, and I told her we spoke about the 60 day delay. She said that if the county of the local government gives us and affirms their compliance, we're going to leave, and then we'll be able to go forward and this issue is a temporary one. Because if they come back to us at a later date, so we could not be compliant, then we need to try to bring them to mind. So that's the it's just keeping it very simple in this way that they're going to go. Okay. So with all of that said, how would you like to proceed as a working group? Should we just... Um, well, I think the major issue is how do the non-cultivators have an application to fill out so that they can actually get a provisional license? And it will be November... Well, the board is scheduled to take action yeah. on October 3rd, right. 17, yeah. for final adoption, and the clock takes 30 days. November 17th, mm -hmm. they're about so uh, the ordinance is so not a very little planning ability. So for non cultivators that would just be a clearance. Permit would be a business license. And then for anyone that may require a use permit or whatever, then that would come along at a later time. So who could be requiring a use permit or you will not until the use permit was approved. What do you think? Do you think? There, I, I think okay, hold on. It's really one one at a time. John, did you want to say something? I think that's okay. why I think. No, but I, I would like to hear what you're thinking. You, know, you, you may not want to say. <laughs> I was going to say something. <laughs> I, yeah. I really don't, okay, don't like. And I would say that's another reason why we. I think not on the key, but look really closely at what kind of flexibility. We other authorization right. is without using the word right provisional permit or license. Right. Is if there's an other authorization that says they are in an application process, process. we will notify you if they fail. Kind of. And that could work just like we're doing things. with the And so I think there's you a lot of application for a use yeah. permit or whatever. Mm -hmm. And go ahead. That application needs to be available on you know, like oh, we're working that. Okay, we're planning on having that done oh, yeah. already. Almost immediately after yeah. so, so, so when it comes to this particular issue, whether we call it provisional or not, provisional license, then do we have enough information for our our um, team here, Juliana and Jude, to synthesize that into a very succinct statement that we would use as a recommendation? I just want to clarify in my own mind one key thing. Can we write a county provisional Ordinance license and license and provisional license uh, on the law of provisional permit that, uh, that works for both cultivation and non cultivation at the same time. I thought we were talking about commercial the application certification being provisional license. So, so application becomes a diesel, not an application. Yes. You get provisional permit? No, the, 
the main box in yeah, the yeah, yeah. yeah. Non-cultivation zone is very different because different. it's a business yeah. license. So if you don't need a use permit, business licenses are usually issued very fairly simple. quickly, very, right? Yeah, most of what we're talking about here is manufacturing and but there are, that require some kind of use permit. Or, and I'm suggesting the same thing as ag. They fill out the ag also, they sell the um, application, they pay their fee, and until they're deemed out of compliance, they're moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Is it for Mary Lynn? Is it possible, since the business licensing does work very differently, and usually it's not only a zoning check, but that the building use is appropriate for the activity? Um, it possible to do compliance plans, much like you're doing for the cultivation type thing, for non-cultivation businesses, so that they could be set up in the same. I, I, I think, because I think that that, uh, yeah. if I recall correctly, that part of the review that happens with CBS when you apply for a building license, I mean uh, business license, is that zoning and tax but also you identify the building or structures or whatever you're needing to use and therefore... And building does sign off on the business plan. Exactly. And so that could be a potential hiccup sort to the hiccup that's been presented on the cultivation side that perhaps we could explore resulting in that way just so that we can move forward with this other authorization. And it'd be helpful if we have some test cases of that. Are we, we have our existing, if you know it's existing, we have a handful of people that have told us their businesses and what they're going to do. And we know that there's a lot out there for non-cultivation that we don't know about. So it's hard to put together a complex plan or ideas when we might know about 20 and in reality there's 75. Right. So now, without seeing some of these situational things, you think like the existing expenses or some of the processing or manufacturing or distribution knows here would be beneficial if you really and that's probably also going to be at a side note because, like I said, that first reading on the third, second reading on the 17th, and go live 30 days. So hopefully in that 30-day period we can... That gives an idea, me. another idea as an alternative to the compliance plan or in conjunction, which is if people could make appointments to come in and be screened for the issues, in other words, not waiting until they're walking in, like you said, so you guys are more aware of it. You know, non-cultivation? Yeah. Okay. It, I have a list of examples from, you know. Okay, so, so uh, you think, it sounds like you have enough information to put something we together. Have, so we can. Ask yeah. Okay, that, that would be fine. Thank you. Do you want to move on? Connect with Sarah? Or who you would connect with Sarah right now. Okay. Um, but, you know, I'm not sure Mary Lynn has. You have Mary Lynn or, or Michael or Michael in the building. Yeah. No, not right no. now. No. The board. The board. Yeah. Yeah, we're not doing the, the, the hope that when we get the state regs that we will be in a position at that point to put something together jointly. But right now we're still dealing with local jobs. I think, to me, we, I believe we have clarity on the provision. Yeah. Well, I think we do too, and I don't. I honestly don't think the non-cultivation will be a problem as well either. But as far as what we want to do, um, I think we have enough to go ahead and put something in writing, which basically will just complement what the board's already said right. and done. That works equally for those uh, business licenses that don't require the use permit. If it requires some further level of AP or use permit. It's a little more that requires Right. And I didn't really want to spend time on that today, but I can. No, no. I think we're working on that under some issue. Yeah. Can I say one more thing? Yes, you can. I think, I, it's Marilyn again. Um, I think we need to be careful when we talk about doing like an appliance compliance plan for manufacturing. I think that's getting at a level where I know that building's not going to want to sign off on things that have to do with electrical or equipment. I mean, that, they're just not going to want to say, oh, yeah, get it, get us a permit in six months or whatever. They're going to want to see that done now. You're concerned about the unknown projectile? 
and there really shouldn't be provisional for anything that has to do with hazardous waste material. Yeah. Those people now can get enrolled. Those can get enrolled now. Well, that'll be through environmental yeah, so health. I mean, you got a lot of different agencies that are You'll have, that. I would say, four planning, planning, building, environmental health, and pitches. Especially if what your manufacturing is is releasing some that after the area, you'll have to visit your. But here's what we don't want to do. Okay, we don't want to inundate all the departments with questions. So work through Sarah. We'll get the. Answer. Answers. Okay. Does that work for you? Yes. All right. Okay. So the next um, item, I think, uh, Jude, you submitted this Trans transportation. Yes. So we can we we can skip canopy and security and go to transportation since we have this. You want to speak to this? Yeah. Very briefly, what we're looking at is um, sort of this, this gap between um, the two ways to go products, to the are. People want the patients to get to a bring order, and there are huge access centers to buy. Because Americans receive access to identify. The other is to delivery systems, and those delivery entities are usually tethered, either tethered to a brick and mortar, or the few of them that are independent are located in one location, such as my partner in San Luis Obispo uh, uses Golden State overnight, which is a transport uh, and, uh, company. That is not federally uh, regulated, so it's totally legal to transport them. <clears throat> they go to statewide. So the question is, what's missing in the, the uh, state regs is uh, the need to actually um, address other forms of delivery. And this is particularly important for the producer counties like Mendocino, because in order to get our infused products that are beyond the methods for the few products. To get them statewide, we have to be able to um, piggyback onto a licensed delivery system to patients. That's not distribution. Distribution is defined as simply between licensed feeds. So I don't know if everybody got the draft proposed language, but I, I suggest a very simple addition to 25.2.3030. I got an email from BCC this morning saying that they're working very hard on this. Uh, they're drafting regulations to clarify courier services, uh, the specific details regarding delivery of commercial cannabis and use of courier services, which they recognize if it's throughout the state. And oh, there's no license type for them. So the Bureau is going to release new regulations this fall. And again, kind of what uh, Paul and other people have been saying, if we can incorporate, because it's especially beneficial to our industry, and then it's you know, I'm going to, you know, to be able to uh, feed onto an inter county uh, delivery system. If we can jump at the phrase that a state licensed entity permitted to perform such deliveries, that's all the only phrase I'm asking that we add to our county ordinance, and that then allows us to jump on whatever they come up with, and then our friend has to go down on state to come up with some decent language. So that's the problem and solution I'm identifying. So I'm waiting for it, but what I would like to do is, is ask our local expert, Okai, because uh, they're mm -hmm. exporting all over the place, and he has to say about it. Uh, yeah. Would you guys be open to that? Yeah, we're working with GSO2 to my partner, and it's, it's basically asking them what kind of license they're going to, since there's not one specifically laid out in the one I tried to offer by the case. So what, there's going to have to be some kind of hybrid, because they're not distributed, obviously, and they're not. Um, retail outlets. So, yeah, I think they're going to come up with something, but for the area. So, so I'll, 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 I'll send this to Matt and see what he's doing. Great. I'd like to ask Casey, are you on the phone? Okay. I, I am. It's, to be honest, it's a little frustrating because I can barely hear, but I can hear you pretty clearly, Hannah. Some of the speakers are much more difficult to hear. Okay, I think you, I should have made the trip you, down. <laughs> the benefit of your most updated information regarding the transportation issue, both for farmers and for, in general, um, avenues that are not through description. And so what we've been working on, 
um, who's spoken extensively with the governor's office, trying to figure out, uh, you know, what we're calling distribution light. Um, the ability for farms to transport the product via an authorization through CFA. So it would not include, um, you know, the, the distribution function still involves taxation and a quarantine for testing. Th those factors would not be included in this um, uh, I'm not permit, or I'm not exactly sure what they would term it, but um, that it, it would be essentially the ability for farmers to transport product either to manufacturing or to distribution. Um, you know, we've kind of raised, I, I think, fairly successfully issue of, um, you know, for far-flung farms, if you add on a whole other cost of the distributor having to pick it up, like that's one of the big fear factors that was put out about the original MMRSA. And, and so we thought we had gotten long past that and reached the point where farmers could distribute. I mean, not, excuse me, not distribute, but uh, could transport. And then we lost that with the passage of Mokursa. And so there's you know, significant work being done to ensure that farms can still transport transport product um, and licensure, the, the, the permission from that would occur under CDFA so that, um, for instance, the Bureau's proposed regulations for uh, distribution also include all of the security cameras, the monitoring, et cetera. Um, we were really successful in advocating that, you know, for off-grid farms, you know, for, that farming in general, it doesn't really work for us to have video cameras monitoring 24 hours a day. That's not something that's going to be an option. And so we're trying to thread the needle of going through DFA to avoid the heavy security restrictions to allow for farmer transport. Um, it, that also, you know, specifically would, would allow for farmers to transport without having a CDL, which means you're not having to pass a drug test, which cannabis farmers, you know, I'm saying with that. Um, so that's essentially the long and the short of, of what those efforts are. We're cautiously optimistic that we'll get there. Um, and, and that's about what I've got right now. A question. Um, is there um, funds from AMBER or CDFA, or are yes. we still trying to? And then secondly, do, does AMBER think that they can handle this in emergency regulation forum, or is it something that's going to have to wait for further legislative action? That I'm not entirely sure about. Um, you know, there there were significant discussions about, um, I think, uh, 133, um, and, and that it may end up getting slipped into that as a rider. You know, the governor hasn't signed it yet, I don't think. I think it's out of the legislature. Yeah, um, it is. Ready? Yeah. Okay. So I'm a little behind on that then. Um, I'll have to confirm with Hezekiah. I'm, I'm actually um, running a little behind on the issue. So, one question: uh, is, Does this at all uh, travel to non-cultivation products, infused products, post-manufactured products? Jeremy Casey. I, I caught. It, uh, does it does it happen? Uh, is this an option for non-cultivation? I, I, assumption being. Um, because this is a CDFA license or, or person, I'm not, you know, again, I'm not sure what the terminology is yet, um, that it would not apply to uh, manufacturers. But if it has to be legislative, and you get a, a person to carry the bill, you can get it signed by February. I mean, it's delayed, but it helps right now. I don't know if now, and I have thought I should leave the county, and I don't have any money for my discretion because they want to partner on manufacturing. So that's but that, that concern is, is valid of whether it's, I think it's within their discretion to the regs or whether they need legislative action. So that's yeah. a big difference rather than November or March. Is it possible for you to inquire uh, with CDFA? Um, you know, if there's somebody at Amber Mars's office that you are contact it. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I think that that is, that will have to narrow our focus also. And if A, we can, as a group, advocate for a particular approach and B, then see if they're like be able to deal with it in the uh, emergency regulatory process versus not, then we know where we have to direct our energy and at what time frame. 
think we also came out with a red set of post AD 133. was very helpful, I think, to non cultivation. I think it was from my new junior week of youth. And uh, then there's Ben, a couple of years later, that came out with something on BK. So they're looking at that. So, uh, Jude, anything else on this right no. now? Okay. Any other questions uh, for Jude on this? Okay, and we also have, and if you don't have it, remember we have Hannah's uh, comments from the last meeting as well, her suggestion. So, so as far as our small group, Julia, Hannah, and Jude, as far as provisional license and transportation, the language, you'll have questions, you can ask Sarah, she'll coordinate. And so then we have canopy and security. Do we want to talk about either one of those now? Well, we touched on it earlier. Um, I think I think it's a, it's a big problem. It's something I'm going to try to hammer as hard as I can in the state. Obviously, CGA and and that's right. They've been talking about people for a while. But, um, I don't see Susan and I seem to get a, a, a response that's maybe a little bit, maybe because we're not obvious. we're not treated as well. Mm -hmm. they, they, they see us as the real deal. I don't know. Yeah. But um, it, it, it is a big deal between the county definitions. Your reception favorable. Your reception is always favorable. Our reception to us is always favorable. This is how to measure canopy is not at all new, and it's stupid. I think a lot of the problems stem initially from the wire board, maybe, but it's mm -hmm. stupid to say that canopy includes all the spaces in between the plants. Well, that, that's what I've been saying. And that is the garden area. And yes, you have to use best practices and control and all the rest. <laughs> in terms of measuring for a category, it's going to be the canopy of the plants. That's correct. And that's what I've been saying to them. Um, the stupid thing was that I didn't read the definition until a couple weeks ago. I didn't assume the canopy. Everyone knows the canopy is. And so there's the definition. So we, we went up to last week, we said, you know, call it drone space. Canopy is canopy. It's the drip line of the plant. So even our borough called it cultivation area, yeah. not right. canopy. Right. But, but what um, they're defining is a drone space or a cultivation area. Not hold on, hold on, Casey. Go ahead, Paul. Wait one at a time. Paul Fish and then. Yeah, so so we, we've been uh, converting them with these, either call it drone space, or call it canopy, but don't call it canopy because that's not what you're defining. And you go, oh, you didn't do that. Okay. So, so we're hopeful. Uh, Hannah, you had um, alluded to a possible problem getting that corrected because, you know, from a horticultural perspective, uh, canopy is drip line. It's not a problem, it's not an interpretation, it's just wrong. That's correct. How, and what, could you elaborate on what you alluded to? That sure. That would not be possible to correct that. Sure. And I'm also going to ask Casey to chime in after I uh, make a brief comment, and that is that, as Don said, this issue has been being worked on for a really long time, and um, and so I'll let Casey give the most up-to-date version, at least with respect to what he knows through CGA. But I want to point out something, one thing that I've been advising people that while we're trying to change this and push forward in it, I'm asking people to be practical in their planning so that if they know that they've got a local 10,000 square foot garden, that they understand that they won't be prevented on our local permit system from having that level of license and if they're bumped up to a higher level of license at the state, it will just cost them a lot more and that that's a planning issue right now. And so I would like to get the word out to people to plan while we're fighting to see if we can move the needle. But Casey, could you update us on where the needle has moved, if anywhere? This is a comment, you know, I did include this in my written comments to CDFA during the last uh, draft of the regs. I mentioned it in public comment at the meeting in Ukiah. Um, the one, you know, the one issue that I see with it from the state's perspective is um, they don't 
you know, I think they see canopy as a as a variable measure based on the fact that it changes and it's like it can be really difficult to track. Um, you know, I, obviously, I I was I was really hard for the for the way that the county measures it, and I was really really, really supportive and happy to see the supervisors move in that direction. Um, I, you know, I think this is a, an issue, a, a situation in which perhaps um, Supervisor McCowan, if you you know, had interest in weighing in um, and, and communicating to CDFA, you know, the way we've chosen to do it, and that we'd like to be able to continue to do that. Um, I, they are drafting the regs right now. I'm also happy to, you know, I, I, I just, uh, as we're on the call right now, I sent a text to Hezekiah, and um, we can follow up with Amber Morris and see where they are um, it, at this point in time. But it is, you know, like was mentioned earlier on the call, um, the cutting is, is, you know, moving right now, um, the more support we can get, especially from, you know, uh, the county itself, uh, you know, folks within the county who are not in the industry, um, I, I think the more likelihood that we can move the needle. And I do think that a backup sort of position is that, um, kind of like what Anna noted just now, that uh, 10,000 square foot in Mendo of actual plant canopy may end up translating to um, 22,000 square foot state license uh, if it's if it's area, you know. And so I, I'm not entirely sure one way or the other. Um, it's you know we have seen movement on the issue um, the last with the last draft of the regs like that. You know it seemed like that was fairly set. But, um, you know, it's definitely something that uh, um, we're going to continue to follow up on. Any questions for Casey? Casey, um, this is um, Casey, with regards to, to this issue, um, do you see moving in the direction of um, advocating for best practices? In other words, if we're look at, looking at monocropping, which is far from best practice, as opposed to, say, integrated pest management, companion planting, et cetera, would that help to move the powers that be? Um, but certainly, you know, climate change is, is harder, and best practices are, are increasingly important. What do you think about that tax, do you think? I think essentially the balance that the state tried to strike in that is the um, that for both cottage and specialty there was an well cottage is not an or cottage is a strict plant count but specialty there was an or at one point I'm not sure in terms of Makursa but at one point there was a 50 plants or 5,000 square feet um, and that was kind of the balance they had tried to strike you know again I, th I think from the state State's perspective, measuring individual plant canopy becomes very difficult. Um, having some sort of defined boundary, you know, another thing that we had kind of batted around a bit during the ordinance process was, you know, some sort of like, like percentage. So you said, well, okay, if this is the square footage of the total minus X percentage for pathways and spacing, then you would have, you know, X approximate canopy. And so. Um, now this is I'm noting it down as as another thing to follow up with um, out of this call and and see you know where where we're at. Thank you. Okay, we have a couple more minutes, and so Paul's got a question. We're going to go to him, and then uh, I want to recap what we've done and what our next steps are, and then go around the room and make sure that anybody else who has a, a comment to make has that time. And we have just a few minutes. Go ahead, Paul. I think what Susan was talking about was the integrated pest management plant as being part of the growing area and taking up some part of that space to grow organically. But what I was wondering is um, um, if you went forward with canopy as defined horticulturally, um, there is a way to do that and it's called track and trace. You can help make your plants up. So I understand why there's a problem. Well, oh, yeah, you can also do it with um, yeah. apps on your phone that have these. That's right. You can do canopy very easily in very many different ways. Okay. So, uh, what have we done today? Well, let's see. We've uh, assigned, actually, or volunteered Hannah, Jude, and Julia to come back and um, put together a pager or so on the provisional license. 
the transportation. I don't know if we want to discuss canopy and security in that. So that's that's one item along with Sarah being your contact. So questions you have for the department, go through Sarah. So basically I'm thinking that we can uh, develop a white paper out of this working group that we will submit to the Board of Supervisors, okay? The second thing is we do agree that we will get off in a position to respond to the draft state regs sometime in the near future. The next meeting of the uh, building requirements will be on October 5th from 1 to 2.30. The next meeting of track and trace will not be until October 24th. And we know that um, the overlay will not be meeting again until our consultant comes on board. So this group, <clears throat> do we want to meet next week, October 5th? At that point, we could either meet from, we're just about done, Diane. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Are you done? Yeah. 1230. 1230 to 130, yep. 130. Okay. So on the 5th, we could meet from 3 to 430, and if you're in building requirements, you might want to do that, or we could meet 4 to 530. So 430? Okay. So this group will meet again on October 5th, next week, 3 to 4.30. So with that, did I miss anything key uh, that we've talked about or that our next step that we need to do? Well, I follow up on uh, um, transportation and candy, and I, so I'll report back at that time. Okay. Thank you. We say we um, talked about Susan and Paul being kind of our Oh, that's right. Do you have all those? You got all those? Okay, that's right. Okay, thank you for that. So let's go around the room and make sure we didn't miss anything. Diane, you can just listen and maybe after you hear any comments, you might want to um, do something, say something. So Jude, we'll start with you and go this way. Uh, I just want to make sure that we can call Kate if you have questions or we do whatever we're working on. But I want to make sure we don't lose track of this rapid response. I mean, we know the comment that it's position to respond to the state rules, but I'm very worried that if we're not well equipped to really respond in a meaningful way, we end up in the same place we're at with them having this weird definition of county. Because the provincial counties weren't so so maybe you want to make some some additional suggestions I mean Hannah put together I think a really good uh, comment on that but maybe you want to do that and include that and in what you bring back next yeah, week kind of suggestion. okay and if that would be fine in the white paper and the board blesses it then we'll be able to move quicker right. when the state so, so yeah please include that Okay. Paul, do you have anything else? <laughs> Susan, okay. you're welcome. Susan, anything yeah, else? Okay. I'll okay. Like, I just appreciate for one being here, but she's very doing it. Thank you for driving. Great. <laughs> Hannah, you have anything else? Just briefly, I'd like to um, perhaps break it into the rapid response once the regs are um, in. But prior to that and prioritizing even clearer is proactive influence of the reading of the emergency risk. So I think that's like super critical right now versus being poised to rapidly respond in November. And I hope that we can accomplish both. Yeah. I meant as a county also. But jumping through this working group, you can keep doing what you're doing, and then hopefully with um, the board's blessing and, and as a unified working group and the staff and the board saying, hey, state, these are the issues of utmost concern to us. Could you consider incorporating this in your rulemaking right now? Okay. Very good. And Cass, if you could send any of the information we got on this particular working group that uh, that some of the members have sent, if you could send that all to Julia, Jude, and Hannah, and also if you could send them just this group, 
a, a listing, a contact list, okay? Thank you. And and you have to know Cass is, is cold to our process here, so everybody <laughs> be nice to Cass, okay? <laughs> All right. We will follow up and see if there is. Okay. All right. Do you know, have anything? Is there anything? Um, there? That going forward on long term of what Hannah said of the working together, putting something together for long term. It could be something potentially the board could consider as an addendum to the ledge platform for 2018. Because more specific on the exact things that we want to advocate for. And if it goes through that process and it's easier for us to pound the pavement. So kind of think about that because that process happens in the fall with usual adoption in December, January for that next legislative year. All righty. Cass, do you have anything? No. <laughs> Cass? I'll just say that I'll have to change all the hard work and push for changes in the state. Great. John, can I save you for last? Mm -hmm. Can I save you for last? <laughs> so you will have the last word today. <laughs> can we do that? <laughs> all right. So, Julia, you have anything else? Just about, or to speak to cannabis, speak about, with the cannabis compliance unit be a way that we could have direct lobbying um, at the state level. Um, thank you. Okay. Well, <laughs> so we have. <laughs> and actually, John, I agree with John because we have, you know, we have our legislative analyst, which is Sarah. Uh -huh. um, we prepare information for the board to send to the state. Plus, we have our um, association. So, the goal of the cannabis unit is not to. Uh, advocate, lobby, or, or focus on legislation. But, you know, at a, at a future date, we can talk about the cannabis unit and I can tell you all more about it, okay? And maybe we'll have an effective one at some time. Well, we will if, you know, if, if some of us you know, had a little more time to put it together, <laughs> we would. <laughs> so, and do you have anything? Diane, anything? No, I'll look into the recording. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Let's go to the people on the call before we um, finish with Supervisor McCowan. Casey's on the call. Casey, any comments? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, like I said, I've got those two items to follow up on and I will definitely report back. Okay, thank you for that. Andy, are you still on the call? Maybe not. And Kevin, Kevin, have you joined us? Okay. All right. And then is there anybody else on the call? Erin is here. Oh. Hi. Uh, thank you all. I look forward to the fifth and the fruits of your labor. Okay. So that Supervisor McCallan, what comments? Uh, canopy. At the point, the county ordinance had an allowance for plant count or canopy, or even mix and match. Somebody could add a 5,000 square foot permit, 25 plants uh, using 100 square feet of frequency, 25 plants outdoor, 2,500 uh, indoor or mixed life. The uh, oh, you saw it. It's pretty easy to count plants. One, two, three, four. So, see, I don't know what uh, your current thinking is on that. Uh, would it be desirable to try and advocate for plant count or square footage? Uh, they, you know, be even just at the lower level. Uh, is there any value in trying to advocate for that, or is that just a concept that people at the state level don't grasp? It do. Um, it is currently. I, I did get confirmation from Hezekiah. It is currently f 5,000 square feet or 50 plants, which does give cultivators the ability to spread it out. Um, you know, in a perfect world, we would get the system the county went with this year because um, it's it really really helpful for small cultivators to be able to get a few extra plants in there. Um, you know, because especially it's like depending upon what vitals you're growing. Going, not all of them get super, super monster massive. And so if you end up with, you know, for instance, 25 plants that are only 50 square feet each, then you could actually, you know, you would be able to double um, the number of plants that you were growing under an actual plant canopy. And so, so definitely, you know, in a perfect world, we would see the Mendocino system adopted at the state level 
or at least adopted for the the small licenses. You know, the uh, which is as far as the state is concerned, that's all we have is the good uh, specialty and small uh, up to ten thousand square feet. And so, so uh, in in a perfect world, we'd be able to advocate successfully for our program being rolled out at the state level as well. Uh, you know, so um, fallback position would definitely be. Um, the option of plant count so that people could spread their plants out. They can have, you know, diversification, uh, cross interplant in, in between, and good integrated pest management. Um, I think that sort of fallback position kind of already does exist in the regs, and so um, it, it, it kind of gives us the ability to try and push a little harder and see if we can get the rest of the way. And also, I. You know, with, with me and various other people uh, in the past, and you know, if I have a little bit of time, maybe I'll try and do that to get a better understanding of how I see it. I'm also uh, talking with both Joe Wood and Mike McGuire, uh, you know, as I'm sure some of you are, and it's going to be important to have understand the issues and ideally become advocates. The history, Mike McCann, uh, not and plant count situation is that the water board thought it was beneath them to count plants. Therefore, they went to growing here, and that's why we lost, along with certain advocates wanting only square footage. Um, that's how we lost the plant count. So that's what you're going to be up against. The water board thinks it's beneath them. Well, the water board reg, and I would say the state legislature, if they wanted to, could override that. And, and the other thing is that the water the water board the the issue there was that they considered all disturbed area. So it wasn't once you got above two thousand square feet of cannabis, it was all disturbed area for any kind of cultivation, vegetable or cannabis. And so they were focused more on um, size of area being cultivated rather than. Um, just specifically cannabis. And that was one of the frustrating things about it. Like as a vegetable farmer, I have 40,000 square feet of vegetables. I have 2,500 square feet of cannabis. And so, um, you know, I, I automatically get leveraged into a much higher tier based on the, on the vegetable cultivation. That's, that, that's, a, that's a bone I pick with the water board, and, and that's just kind of an aside. In the entire cultivated area or disturbed area, whether people are growing on it or not, should not uh, act as a, a veto on the state license types. I would agree with that. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, to be continued. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, and we will see you next week. Um, thanks for all your work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.